Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today, I'm gonna to share with you how to feed yourself and your microbiome. So why am I the person to tell you this? Well, I've invested probably between 10 and 15,000 hours of research into alternative healing, the gut microbiome, and all things in the alternative medicine space. I used to have extreme food sensitivities. I basically lived on a diet of five foods for five years. And now I'm at a point where I can eat almost anything with basically no problems. You know, I can eat gluten, I can eat dairy, I can have chocolate, histamine foods, I can drink alcohol. Currently, right now, I'm having a couple of problems with onions and garlic, but this is temporary. I know I'll be able to eat them again. But today, for dinner, I had a really nice meal. I'm gonna show you a picture of it just here. Now, I know it's not the best picture ever taken. I actually hadn't planned to make a video about this, but looking at it, I was thinking, this meal is incredible, and I know why I built the meal the way that I did. And there's a lot that goes into it that you might not notice at a first glance. And what I wanna to do today is break this meal down with you so you can understand everything that went into it and why it is such a healing meal. So I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna walk you through what this meal actually is. So the large portion is egg fried rice. The smaller meat portion is basically bolognese. And the, the side where you can see these big beans is basically just a side of veggies and beans. And the primary component of the meal we had was this egg fried rice. This was actually the main meal. The other two were actually leftovers. These are parts of previous meals that we just added to this meal. And as you're gonna see, this actually makes it even more powerfully healing. So obviously you can see many of the ingredients here, but there's also some that you can't. And I just wanna walk you through what is in each of these portions so you get an idea of the ingredients that went into this meal. So in the egg fried rice, we have carrots, green beans, peas, potatoes, two different types of peppers, red and green, eggs, butter, rice, and then we also have some spices and seasonings. So we've got black pepper, cayenne pepper, ginger, turmeric, olive oil, and apple cider vinegar. So you can see already just from a diversity perspective, we already have quite a lot of diversity going on in this meal. But let's take a look at the bolognese. So in the bolognese, we have tomatoes, dried basil, ginger, turmeric, cumin, cayenne pepper, again, two types of peppers, mushrooms, celery, minced beef, and broth. This was actually chicken broth. And finally, in this little veggie side, we've got green beans, broad beans, or I believe in maybe in America and here in Portugal, they call them favas, fava beans, carrots, peas, and potatoes. So already, a lot of ingredients, a lot of different things going in here. And as I always say, when you're trying to build a strong microbiome, diversity, diversity in the foods that you eat equates to diversity in your microbiome. So we're already going strong there, but it gets even more diverse and I'm gonna explain it to you. So from here, what I wanna do is I wanna look at some of these foods and I've split this into two categories. We've got category one, foods that nourish you, and category two, foods that nourish your microbiome. So when I say foods that nourish you, what does that actually mean? Well, as far as I'm aware, nourishment means things that we eat that are actually able to help us build ourselves or to bolster or to support our metabolic functions, to provide caloric value, and to provide things that support these processes, so it's like supporting your metabolism. So this includes essential nutrients like your B-complex vitamins, your essential amino acids, but this also includes other substances that support your body that aren't actually essential, including things like polyphenols and substances like, for example, malic acid in apple cider vinegar, but we're gonna come to that. So starting at the top, let's look at the eggs. So eggs are one of the most nourishing foods on the planet. I'm gonna do a tier list video soon, I guarantee you eggs, they're gonna be in S tier or A tier. They are absolutely one of the most powerful and nourishing foods on planet Earth. The egg whites themselves are a good source of protein, but the real power in the egg comes from the yolk. The reason for this is a yolk is basically everything you need to make a baby chick, which means there's everything in there that you need to function as a human. All animals are kind of the same, and what one animal needs to make itself is what another animal needs to make itself. So all of the ingredients for nourishment are basically present in an egg yolk. Some of the most noteworthy things are the B-complex vitamins. Eggs are extremely high in B-complex vitamins. They also have all of the minerals that you need, including trace minerals as well. So as long as you're getting good quality eggs, you're gonna have all of the trace minerals in there too. And probably my favorite thing is the choline. Eggs are the best dietary source of choline that you're gonna get. And choline is one of the most powerful nutrients. It really helps your brain to function, it helps you to create healthy bile. It's one of the best liver supporting nutrients and it's actually a methyl donor as well. It is insane, choline is just amazing. So in this meal, this was a meal that I shared with my wife and in total we had six eggs. So this was basically a three 
three egg portion. So that doesn't quite meet the protein requirements. You've got about 18 grams of protein there, but the three egg yolks basically provide all of the vitamins, all the minerals, all of the like the nourishing substances that you need from a micronutrient perspective. So I cooked the egg fried rice in a combination of olive oil and butter, and the bolognese was cooked with olive oil. So we've got olive oil and butter here. So the butter and the olive oil together provide some of the really important fat macronutrients. The olive oil providing some of these monosaturated fats, and most importantly, the butter providing plenty of these saturated fats. The butter and as well the egg yolks providing the saturated fat also means that it's providing some cholesterol too. Your body uses the saturated fat to create cholesterol, but most foods that have some saturated fat in them also have some cholesterol in them too. So cholesterol, extremely important. We completely got it wrong with cholesterol. Cholesterol is essential for health. You use it to make all of your steroid and sex hormones. This is your cortisol. This is your testosterone, your estrogen. You use it to make vitamin D. You use it to build the membrane of every single cell. Your brain is 30% cholesterol by dry mass. Cholesterol is not the enemy. Cholesterol is really important. And this meal is very high in cholesterol, which is great. So on top of that, it's also just providing some fat calories. It's really important that we have some dietary fats, again, because we use them to make our hormones, etc. But they also provide a really good fuel source. In the bolognese, we have some red meat. Red meat is one of the most nourishing foods on earth. I actually think that, that generally speaking, red meat is the best. It's better than fish, it's better than poultry, it's better than eggs from a nourishment perspective. So while, for example, the egg yolks provide a really nice amount of vitamins and cholesterol saturated fat, red meat itself is the best source of things like protein specifically. Maybe we can do a tier list video of different types of proteins. Again, eggs maybe will be a little bit lower. Red meat is gonna definitely be somewhere near the top. So there's not that much red meat in this. You see the portion is actually quite small, but this must be adding at least another five or seven grams of protein. This is probably bringing us up to maybe 25, 26 grams of protein for the meal, which is pretty good. You know, we're aiming for like 25 to 35 grams of protein every meal. So we're kind of within that range by now. Also, this the variety of different plants that we have here provide a lot of polyphenols and the impact of polyphenols has more of an effect on the gut and we're gonna to come to that, but it does provide some benefits inside of the body. Many polyphenols have affinities for different types of toxins so they can support your body in detoxification processes. They also activate detoxification processes. They're kind of like catalysts that encourage your body to do detoxification. So they're kind of providing some nourishment in the fact that they're supporting your body in the detoxification process. With the potatoes and the rice, we've got the, the backbone of the caloric nutrients being provided by this meal. So as you can see, obviously egg fried rice, you've got egg, you've got something frying it, and you've got rice. Rice is like the core calorie provider in this meal. And we also have a little bit of potato in there as well. So I personally do amazingly on carbohydrates. These work really good for me. If for some reason you don't tolerate them, then don't eat them. But I do find that if you can tolerate them, generally they're really helpful, they're really healing. They really help with adrenal fatigue. They really help you have energy. They help your performance at the gym. The only time I would consider not using them is you, if you have severe gut problems and you have gut reactions to starches, or if you're struggling with like insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, something like that, then maybe they're not the best, or maybe you just need some management strategies to support your body with that, which is a nice transition onto our next nourish ingredient being the apple cider vinegar. So very interestingly, having some apple cider vinegar before or with your meal, all vinegar contains acetic acid, and this allows your body to improve its insulin response to carbohydrates. So not only are we eating plenty of fiber in this meal from all the different beans and different vegetables, things like mushrooms and celery, all of these are buffering the carbohydrate absorption, but we also have some vinegar in here. This acetic acid is gonna support the body in metabolizing these carbohydrates in a healthy way instead of triggering a very significant insulin spike, which is not really ideal. It's not great for health. The general rule of thumb is we want to keep the blood sugar and insulin spikes as low as possible and as infrequent as possible. So again, it's not about avoid these foods, it's about enjoy them, but enjoy them responsibly and understand how they affect your body biochemically. And finally, on the nourishing side of this equation, we have broth. So the bolognese was actually made using chicken broth. Broth is absolutely phenomenal for providing nourishing substances, especially things that are gut healing. So this is the glutamine, this is the glycine, there are some really interesting compounds called glycoproteins. So these are like combinations of these substances and these kinds of polysaccharide structures that are also protein based. They're really, really helpful for building a strong gut lining and improving things like leaky gut and just supporting your brush border enzyme production. Also broth and things like, like apple cider vinegar and seasonings, they just add so much of a depth of flavor to the food that you eat. 
your food tastes good, there's a really good likelihood that it's very nourishing for you. So that's how this meal is nourishing you. But now we're gonna look at how it's nourishing your microbiome which I would say comes secondarily. You have to nourish yourself first, that's the number one priority, then nourishing your microbiome comes a very close second. It's very, very important. So how are we doing that with this meal? So first of all, the variety of foods that we're eating. All of these different vegetables, be that the vegetables that we've used as the primary vegetables in the meal, so the things like the tomato sauce and the bolognese, the peas, the potatoes and rice, the green beans, the things like that. But you've also got the spices, and this is probably one of my favorite cheat codes to improving your microbiome diversity, is adding in a good variety of different spices because you can boost the microbiome. You can boost the microbiome enhancing effects significantly as you can cram so many different polyphenols into every single meal. So just looking at the spices in these meal alone, we've got pepper, cayenne pepper, ginger, turmeric, dried basil. We have bay leaves in the broth. We have apple cider vinegar too. So this adds so many extra polyphenolic compounds that really help to boost your microbiome. When you're thinking about polyphenols, think colors, flavors, and smells. So this bolognese actually doesn't have onions and garlic in. As I said, I'm not doing great with those at the minute, but there's still so much you can do. So if there's certain things I'm saying that you don't tolerate, don't use them, find a way around. You, know, you might do great with onions and garlic, so stick them in. We've also got mushrooms in here. Mushrooms contain some very unique prebiotic substances, including chitin, chitin, don't know how that's pronounced, and glucans. So these are a different angle. These are a different type of prebiotic compound. And again, the, the strength with building your microbiome is in the diversity. So not only do we want diversity in one category of prebiotic, as in polyphenols, we want a variety of different types of prebiotics. So taking that even one step further, we've got the starches involved in this meal. We've got the potato and we've got the rice. And the thing is, the rice that we used to make the egg fried rice is actually rice that we had from a previous meal. So this is rice that we cooked and then cooled and left in the fridge. And then we took it back out of the fridge and we reheated it. When you do this cooking, cooling, cooking process, it creates a lot of resistant starch. So this is a type of starch that your body can't break down and it actually turns into a really powerful prebiotic substance, which means it feeds a whole bunch of different types of microbes that normal starches don't. This is also true of the potato in the small vegetable side that we had that had the fava beans in it too. This was also cooked and cooled, which means we're gonna have resistant potato starch and resistant rice starch, which are two different types of resistant starch that again, feed different microbes. So we've got so much different diversity. We've got layers of complexity of diversity for feeding the microbiome here. And the icing on the cake for the microbiome here is the fava beans, or as we call them in England, broad beans or green beans. I think in England, we call them green beans. So I was a bit hesitant about trying these because I'm a little bit wary around certain FODMAPs sometimes, you know? My gut still isn't perfect, but I tried these and I didn't really have a problem. I got a little bit of a sulfurous feeling, a little bit of a burning, but it was okay. You know, it was nothing uncontrollable. And I'm sure this is just because I've just introduced these and it takes some time for the microbiome to adjust. That's the whole point after all, right? That's what we're trying to do. So when you combine all of these different factors together, the fava beans, also these were cooked and cooled. And I'm, there are very little studies on this. They've only really looked at it in starches like potatoes and rice, but I'm absolutely certain that cooking and cooling beans and then reheating them also provides other types of prebiotic resistant starches that aren't present when you cook them the first time. So we've got layers and layers of resistant starch, the potatoes, the rice, the fava beans. We also have other types of prebiotics in the fava beans. These are certain FODMAPs, which is amazing. I'm so happy that I'm tolerating some FODMAPs currently. This is really great for me. On top of this, we've got the mushrooms, we've got the different polyphenols and all of the different types of vegetables that we had, all the different colors, all the different flavors. And all of this diversity just makes for a banquet for your microbiome to diversify and to become strong. So when you combine both of these aspects, this is just one meal, but this gives you a template. This gives you something that you can use to build your own meals. We need to be nourishing you and we need to be nourishing your microbiome. And the trick to nourishing you is we need calories first of all. So if that comes from fat or if that comes from carbs or if that comes from both, that's ideal. We need a protein source. I'm a big fan of animal nutrition as far as protein is concerned. We've got that broth in there to feed your gut. We've got all of those B vitamins in the eggs. We've got the choline, all the saturated fats, all of that nourishment. And we've got all of this diversity in the different types of food and the way that the food is prepared, the cooking and cooling, all of this diversity to feed your microbiome. And you bring those two together and what have you got? You've got perfect health. If you've really enjoyed this video, this has been really helpful for you. Please let me know below. Leave me a comment. Tell me that it's been helpful. Let me know what you learned. Just before I go, I wanna extend an invitation to you to join me in my group coaching community obviously healing where we talk about all of the things that you can do to make your healing protocol obvious gut health is a huge part of obviously healing this picture that i took 
was actually sharing my meal with this community. That is what inspired me to actually make this video that I'm, that I'm recording now. So this shows you, this is exactly the kind of thing that we're talking about in this community. So if you wanna utilize diet, digestive support to focus on healing your gut, if you wanna incorporate things like functional training, fasting, sauna, daily movement and meditation to help you achieve your next level of wellness, make sure you click the link in the description below. Come and join us. We would love to have you. It is an amazing community. We're having so much fun. There's so many results and I'd absolutely love to have you in there. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.